Hey, welcome to Craft Beer Bucket List with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. And welcome back to episode 17 of Craft Beer Bucket List, where we review beers you have to try before you die. How you doing, Ray? I am awesome, Mike. How are you tonight, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. No complaints. We're about to be doing better. Yeah, always. Always. Some good beers in front of us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, tonight we've got a, we say it every episode, we have a solid lineup. Yeah, are you ready to dive into this? Sol- I know you know what we're solid. getting. Solid. But... Solid. Yeah. Solid. So, uh. Tonight, you and I are going to be sharing, uh, this one's near and dear to me. Uh, this is local to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we're going to be sharing the Arrowhead Pale Ale from the Marshall Brewing Company. Uh, I'm going to be drinking, and I hope I say this right, uh, but I'm going to be having the Guayabera IPA from Cigar City. It's pretty close. And uh, So I'm not the linguist. I won't pretend to be, but I think I did okay with that. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, you have the Edge of Mysteries from Braxton Brewing. So another beer from that fine establishment out your way. Yeah. They're putting a lot of stuff in cans, so it makes it a little easier. Right? Yeah. Hey, it works. No. I, again, like you said, it's a solid lineup. We know it's a solid lineup because we choose the beers. So and I think we have a, a something a little special from Braxton later on. We'll talk about it later, but we have a little bit. It's not a lot, but a little bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now Braxton hooks us up, so we're hooking you up. Yeah, man. So, so so I'm uh I'm cracking open my beer right now. This uh, the Arrowhead Pale Ale. I am very familiar with this beer. I don't hey, know Ray, if you've Ray, had hold it on yet. a minute. Hold on a minute. You ready? Yes. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh man. So uh, let's see if this comes through. I'm holding this can away from the mic. If you hold it too close, it makes a horrible sound. Did that come through at all on your end? Sounds good. It sounds delicious. Okay, good, good. So I'm taking this one straight out of the can. That's that's actually how I prefer this beer. Um, but that's just me. So I encourage everyone to drink their beer how they want, because God bless America. So tell us about Marshall, since it's uh, in your backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Marshall, I mean, it's a staple for us here in Tulsa. Uh, The company's goal is to bring the art, quality, and enjoyment of craft brewing to Oklahoma. Uh, They go by NBC. It's for the Marshall Brewing Company. Uh, They do that by operating with a highly trained and educated staff that, well, they all have a passion for top quality brewing, and they they don't settle. So that's just a huge mantra to live by. Uh, They aim to be known as the premier brewery in Oklahoma, and they look to be respected on a regional and national level with respect to the markets. Uh, so, I mean, they're just a big, big deal here. So, they were started in uh, 1998. Uh, so, they've been around for a minute at this point. That's what, if I can math, that's 22 years. So, that says a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, they have quite the, the footprint in the Tulsa Metro. So, they've done really well. They've expanded and grown. Uh, one of my favorite spots to eat locally in Tulsa, and we've talked about on the show before, is Elgin Park. Uh, they have their own beers that they brew in the restaurant, and they're all recipes, and they're brewed by the Marshall Brewing Company. Nice. So I think that's pretty cool that they partner with you know local restaurants like that and bring more awesome beer that you can only get at that restaurant. Super cool. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, the the um, somewhere I read that it was the first brewery in Tulsa since World War II. I believe that's right. Yeah, isn't that cool? That's very cool. Well, so Marshall Arrowhead is an American pale ale. sits at 5.2% ABV and sits at 40 IBUs. So it's not real high in IBUs, but it's still got some in there. It's a little hoppy. Yeah, so uh, Marshall uh, describes the Arrowhead pale ale as it's aiming to quench the thirst of hot summer afternoons and warm evenings, which you get plenty of in Oklahoma. Oh, I mean, yes. I, I remember uh, it was mid December a couple years before I moved away, and it was just hit, you know, it was like six o'clock at night, getting dark because it's in December, and it was still like 70 degrees out. 
Um, yeah. And I'll tell you, I kind of miss that kind of weather. I know it sounds crazy, but I miss it. So they say the Arrowhead is crafted to provide refreshment as a lighter, highly quaffable ale com- complemented by unique aromatic citrus notes that both tickle the nose and enliven the palate. Complexity, balance, and softness make Arrowhead Pale L a ridiculously easy drinking summer seasonal. Sounds makes it sound great. Yeah, that's well, that's because it is great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this I is mean, one of my favorite beers. From yeah, Marshall. And, and I know they make a couple different IPAs uh, as well. So they've they've got a good. Uh, robust list of uh, similar beers so as you've taken a couple of drinks of this uh how are you feeling about it uh, i feel great you know and i'm gonna go right back to the weather in oklahoma yesterday it was like 65 degrees which is weird for january today it was rainy and in the mid 30s and we have a chance for snowflakes tonight so it's like what gives uh, oh. we just had a lot of weird weather lately a lot of huge shifts in temperature and this beer is just making me feel better about life uh full body beer it tastes great uh, me being an ipa guy this delivers just enough bitters for me i really appreciate what's here it's not too hoppy uh which which i can appreciate so it's uh i think this is a great where they list it as a seasonal beer for me this can it goes year round uh this fits you know dead of winter when it's just cold and rainy outside this makes me feel good about myself uh, we know they use the citra hops, uh, which is fantastic. Um, it, it's just very unique flavor comes with the citra hops. If you follow hops and uh, you're a citra fan, this is a beer for you. Uh, there's a lot of citrus notes that, that just really shine through in this. It's not overpowering, but they're absolutely there. And it has a really good mouthfeel. So just, uh, I hate to just make it sound great, but it is. You know, those are just some highlights for me on this particular beer. What What about you, Mike? What do you think? You know, um, I like it. It's a little bit lighter. Uh, so it's lighter than a typical, what I would say, IPA. I know, it, I guess it's an APA uh, by standards, right? Um, Correct. And so um, maybe that's part of it too. So it, it's taken back a little bit, which I like. So it's still um, got those typical IPA flavors and, you know, the hoppiness, but it's a little bit less intense which is good for me. And I, and, and I don't know what you think about that, but for me, it works out really nicely. Oh, no. I mean, like I said, I gave it a raving review. It really spoke to me. I mean, I prefer something with some more bitters, you know, a little uh, hop forward, if you will, but still overall solid beer. I mean, I, I am a fan. So I did think, so it's the Marshall Arrowhead. I thought that the carbonation was a little high for my taste. But I think that also makes it a little bit more crispy, a little bit more snappy, which I think would go along with the IPA or APA kind of standard. What do you think? No, I would agree with that. Uh, so I thought the carbonation was on point. Um, but I'm used to that, you know, for, for this type of beer. I know you drink a lot of the dark beers, which tend to have a, a lower amount of carbonation, uh, in the, which they want to use in the canning process, which makes sense. Um, so this, though, I can see being a little more than what you like, but uh, it speaks to me just fine. So either way, it's a, it's a well-balanced beer. I think it's crafted in a way where it speaks to folks like me who like those really super hoppy, bitter beers, uh, but also can speak to, to guys like you who aren't really into that. They've kind of, you know, like you said, it's an APA, so it's just a little easier to drink. Yeah. So what kind of food would you eat with it? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I cooked a whole chicken tonight and I oh, yeah? used some Thai seasonings on it. So just a really robust, flavorful meal. I would I would totally have it with that and basically okay. anything else. It's yeah. one of those beers, super hearty. It goes great with a burger, uh, maybe a pulled pork sandwich, you know, just a, the run of the mill hearty, just like, ugh. So what would you rate this out of 10? Solid nine. Okay. So I was going to, I was going to give an eight to eight and a half. There you so go. I think we're in the range. I believe so. Cool. So either way, it sounds like we're going to put the Marshall Brewing Company's Arrowhead Pill Ale on our craft beer bucket list. Yeah. I think so. I think it's also time for our first commercial break. I agree. We'll be right back. See ya. All right. Welcome back. It's that time of the show where we say, hey, Ray, what are you drinking? Man, I am drinking another fantastic pale ale, Mike. Oh, yeah. I love what pale is ale. It? So it is a beer. I'm drinking. What? Leave me alone. 
<laughs> so this is kind of a, a fun one. Uh, this is going to be from the Cigar City Brewing Company out of Tampa, Florida. So pretty cool that we're, I don't think, we, this may be our first beer uh, out of the Florida area that we've reviewed. Yeah, I know we've had a couple on like our social media, uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter and whatnot, but I don't remember having one on the show. Yeah. So, but I've got the Gaia Berra, and I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but the Gaia Berra IPA, again, from Cigar City. And uh, dude, so far, this is really good. Um, yeah. I'm enjoying this. But uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this beer. Um, so the name, you know, for me, is pretty cool. I had I had to look this up because I didn't know this. Uh, but the Guayabera is a is a type of shirt. Did you know that? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. And so a it's a shirt. Or, a shirt, yeah, like you know, with sleeves and a collar. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's very traditional throughout Latin America. Um, it combines style functionality. Uh, and traditionally has, you know, four pockets. Um, so yeah, I've seen those shirts. I didn't know the name, it has four um, pockets. but that's what they named do what now four pockets. It has four pockets. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, like what you and I would wear when we go to the lake for fishing, I guess it has the pockets oh. on the front so you can put your stuff in it. Okay. But, uh, I think this is more for style than functionality. Okay. So, but in any case, you know, being from Florida, you know, Cigar City, uh, they've got the Latin thing going on. So it totally makes sense uh, to name, you know, a beer after such a traditional, you know, piece of uh, clothing. So I think that's a pretty yeah. cool way to tie things together. Yeah. Um, you know, when I visited South Florida, I mean, you go to Miami or Fort Lauderdale, you go to uh, cigars are very common. And the guys have like the, those style shirts on, you know, like the little hat. I, I don't know what they're called, but definitely has that vibe. Okay. It's like, yeah, I can see that. So even on the front of the can, um, Cigar City, of course, they have their logo. And right in the middle of it is a cigar. Hey, man, I'm so, putting that on uh, Today I Learned. Yeah, see? There you go. Yeah. So Cigar City Brewing out of Tampa, Florida. Um, yeah. When, when, did, when? How long have they been in business? Uh, that is a great question. Give me just a second and I'll tell you. 2007. Or it was okay. founded in 2007. They actually opened in 2009. Okay. So so they've been around for a minute. So uh, they've been making award-winning beer, you know, since 2009, uh, which is great. Uh, they stick to mostly ales and lagers. Yeah. Uh, of course, they focus on sun and citrus, which, of course, Florida is known for that. And uh, they take cues from the cigar industry. And, of course, being in South Florida in the Tampa area, uh, very common. So they're sticking to their roots, and I can appreciate that. And uh, they have a liquid, or uh, behind all of Cigar City's brewings, liquid is the philosophy that quality is achieved by giving first-rate ingredients to first-rate people in a space where they are free to pursue their passion. Hmm. All and, right, that's and cool. And I literally just read that verbatim. That's one of those things you don't want to ad-lib. So yeah. if it sounds like I was reading, I absolutely was, I'm trying to you know, pay respect to the brewery. Uh, but this beer, Mike, like I said, it's it's good. I'm taking another drink right now, so sorry. Dramatic pause for effect. Yeah. So the 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 notes that I have here, oh. uh, I'll try to give you some a break here. And so it says it's 5.5 percent ABV, 50 IPU, 50 IBUs, and it's primarily Citra or all Citra hops. All Citra. So, so it's going to be a, a single hop beer. Um, but. I mean, that's a pretty uh, low ABV for most IPAs, right? And that's the uh, s short end of IBUs for a lot of IPAs from what I've learned, right? And so it's it's not too far off. Um, you like the beer that we just had was 40 IBUs. Yeah. So this bumped up to 50. Uh, so I think it's you know 60 to 80 is uh, the range for an IPA. So okay. this isn't bad. It's Yeah, it's on the low end. And that makes sense to me being a single hop. You know, maybe there's going to be some, uh, you know, Cicerones out there that might might correct me if I'm wrong. You know, that's fine because I'm not a, I'm not a pro at this. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it has enough IBUs. It's bitter enough. It speaks to, to my taste, bros. I'm enjoying this. Um, I tell you, too, I like the color of this. It's got like an opaque orange mm -hmm. uh, color to it. It's very hazy. Um, and it holds a solid, you know, uh, cover, which is great. It keeps the, the color. It's just fantastic. 
Uh, it's got some white bubbles that lace the glass, which which I like. You know, as you drink it down, uh, just the lacing there appears. And I, I think that's nice. I enjoy that. So it definitely has some uh, citrusy notes, which, of course, you want to have shine through in an IPA. And this certainly delivers. Now, if I, if I smell this, Mike, oh, my, uh, you get some nice, I uh, hope I'm picking these out right, but there's definitely some orange in there, some grapefruit. And uh, I'm going to say more of the zest. You know, it's it's a little different when you get the zest off the, the peel or the rind versus the, the fruit itself in something. So definitely that that smell and aroma is coming through. Yeah. Which is fantastic. I'm drinking some more because I really like this, Mike. So the Guaberry IPA, 5.5% ABV, 50 IBUs from Cigar City Brewing out of yes. Tampa, Florida. You can find them if you look them up on the uh, Instagram and Twitters of the world, uh, just at Cigar City Beer. Um, is this a, so what, out of 10, what would you rate the beer? You know, I would give this one an 8.5. Okay. Um, you know, again, solid flavor. Um, again, I, I don't mind the 50 IBUs. Um, it's, I want something a little more hop forward. Uh, I'm a fan of citrus hops. That flavor really, really shines through. Uh, you know exactly what you're going to get. Uh, the, again, the citrusy notes ring through like I would expect. And I appreciate that. You know, the carbonation here for me is on point. Uh, I don't think it's over or under carbonated. It's just just right. It has a fantastic uh-huh. mouthfeel. Uh, but again, it's it's up there. I'll rate it solid eight and a half. Not my favorite IPA, but I'd be more than happy to crush some more of these. So, so definitely going on my bucket list. So put on your bucket list. The last question I got yes. for you is what would you eat with this beer? So what's your food pairing? Being that this beer is from South Florida. Um, I, I think I would take a Cuban sandwich with this. Maybe have some yuca chips to go with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds pretty tasty. Uh, it does. Now, so, now I'm ready to go. To, you know what, Mike? I think tomorrow for lunch, I'm going to go to a spot and tell it called Mangoes. You can't have mangoes. Why, why can't? Why? You can't have a mango. Um, I, well, I'm not going to go there to eat a mango. That's what it's called. It's a traditional Cuban restaurant here in Tulsa in the Pearl District. And uh, the owner is from South Florida. Um, and they their you know, signature dish is the Cuban sandwich. They even fly their bread in from South Florida daily to make their Cuban sandwiches. Daily? Yeah, that's what the owner said. So I don't, I don't question him. <laughs> they tell me they fly their bread in. I'll believe it. Maybe it's weekly. Either way, they fly their bread in from Florida. And they make their Cuban sandwiches with it. I mean, I, I like to sit here. I think that that would be impossible. But, you know, with Amazon, they're like, you order this in the next hour, you'll get it in an hour. You know? <laughs> right. Like, actually, we already know daily, your but order. Weekly seems already more legitimate to me. Door. I think I stepped all over yeah, your mic. What was that? No, no, I'm saying I, the more I think about it, it probably was weekly because daily is just too much. Yeah. No, but what I was saying is like Amazon's like, actually, we already know you're going to order it. So it's already at your front door. Oh, yeah. It's crazy how uh, how they keep track of us like that. No, but what I was saying is you can't have a mango. That's an old SNL skit. And I forget the guy's name that did it. But he's like, you can't have a mango. Uh, remember that? I totally missed that reference. Yeah, you know, it's okay. I just remember there was a skit like uh, Garth Brooks wanted mango and mango wouldn't let him have him. He's like, you can't have a mango. Oh, uh, okay. Forget yeah, I that guy's that name. Skit. Golly. Wow. I can yeah, see so, his face. Yeah. He also played the little kid, the the Girl Scout cookies or whatever that was. Right, man. Good old 90s, bro. Yeah. 90s SNL. Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> so, but Mike, I, I got to ask you, it's the time of the day. Uh, what what are you drinking now? So, so I want you to, to listen to this. Uh-oh. Oh, I heard that. Yeah. So I haven't opened it yet or i just opened it i had not opened it yet i have in front of me edge of mysteries by braxton labs in newport kentucky or actually it's the uh, braxton labs is actually located i think in bellevue kentucky but it's all in the covington newport area um so it's right it's right up on the south it's northern kentucky but the south end of uh, cincinnati so uh i have not tried it yet so give me just a second all right. Whew. Now this beer 
Now this packs a punch, dude. Really? Yeah. Um, whew. It does not say the IBUs on here. It is 6.5% ABV. But man, it made me pucker up a little bit. Oh, really? Well, it says yeah. New England IPA, so they tend to, Yeah. you know, because of their own, own flavor. Pro- I like a New England IPA. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. It might be a little, little much for you there. Well, I, you know, that's my first drink, so I'm letting my taste buds kind of adjust. Um, so as that's doing, as I kind of get used to it, I'll kind of I'll, I'll read off the little story about Braxton Labs. So Braxton Labs is actually the second location for Braxton Brewing. So this is their place where they do uh, different stuff. But I said, this is Braxton Labs, a place where we ignite innovation, spark conversation, celebrate community, and champion creativity. Braxton Labs was born to capture the spirit of the garage where Braxton Brewing Company started. Located in Newport, Kentucky, this brewery and taproom showcased the talent of our brewing team as they experiment and craft small batch beers, creating new products and styles on a weekly basis. So they, they, they say it's in Newport. I really thought the address was actually in Bellevue, but I could be wrong. Um, so Braxton Labs actually is a, a, a buyout. So it used to, the brewery that where Braxton Labs is used to be called Eight Ball Brewing. And when, uh, when we ran the craft beer bar, we used to get a couple of different beers from eight ball brewing. And, um, the people that own that also own, started a distillery, a uh, new rift distilling, uh, in, in the general area. And once the distilling operation really got moving forward and they were making blends and all that kind of stuff, um, th- they just decided to move all their social capital and their, and their people over to the distilling side. And they've just, not really abandoned the brewery, but just kind of went in a different direction and uh, sold the space and the, all that to Braxton Labs. So, uh, so that's where we're at. So anyway, uh, I actually con- I, re- I reached out to Braxton Labs about this beer. So I picked it up um, at some point. I forget when. I thought it was cool. And I said, hey, uh, there isn't a whole lot online about this. So I'm trying to get some more information, right? Right, right. And they said, uh, so just kind of, you know, trying to summarize, it says they use minimal hops in the world whirlpool uh, just to provide a bit of uh, a touch of bitterness. And then they o- overload it with uh, a ton of citra hops, like two pounds per barrel of citra hops. So it's all wow. citra hops. Um, I mean, and it, boy, it gets you. It'll come right out at you. Um, but uh, the, so the, the, the name was what was kind of interesting to me. And so uh, I asked about the name as well. And, it's, you know, the name Edge of Mysteries carries some weight here. Uh, it comes from a quote from scientist Louis Pasteur. So Pasteur invented the process of pasteurization, uh, which in addition to making food storage safe, also allow beer to be uh, have a longer shelf life, right? So the process right. is it's essential to a lot of beers it's brewed. Uh, and a lot of brewers pay homage to that uh, in a lot of different ways. So uh, the quote in question, I am on the edge of mysteries. And the veil is growing thinner. So it refers to being on tip of discovery. And uh, that's kind of what they're going for is the tip of discoveries with uh, their processes and their new beers and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know, like referring back oh, to a yeah. quote by uh, the famous Louis Pasteur. So uh, I'm going to take another cool. drink here real quick. Do it. Whew. Man, d- you, would, you would really like this beer. You would really like this. It is, it is punching, but it tastes pretty damn good. Um, I like it. I, I like it. So it's, it's bitter, but man, that citrus flavor just really comes through pretty good. No, that's always so, a positive. Yeah. And so I'll tell you another thing I like about it is that the body of the beer is, it's nice and thick and firm. Like it's right. It's, it's like a medium body. So it's not like oil or anything like that, but it's not watery or anything. It's really there. Um, so, you know, it makes it, I mean, it's just, just right. So as you're drinking it, you get that firm, uh, to medium body of the beer. I'm getting a lot of the citrusy stuff, you know, like the, the oranges, the grapefruits, the lemonese, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and they go from front to back as I drink through it. So, uh, you know, the bitterness, what, the bitterness kind of lasts throughout, man. It's it's from the beginning to the end, and then some of the you know the the, the after flavors that you kind of hang around in your mouth after you get done 
swollen and whatnot. So that sounds uh, so good to me, dude. I'm telling you, like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I could drink a ton of these just because the flavor is so powerful, but I could definitely see where this would be something that, um, like if, you know, if you're, if you enjoy like, um, pseudo Sue from toppling Goliath or some of those other pretty heavy hitters out there that are kind of coming along, I think this is in that ballpark. Um, mm. I think it's, you know, I think if you're a hop head or an IPA kind of person that this would be something you'd really want to try to go after and see, see if you like it or not. So, um, now I wouldn't have, I want to be able to drink more than one of these, but this is definitely going on a bucket list for anybody just because of the flavor alone. Uh, and I would definitely, you know, put it even higher on the bucket list for people that like the, the creative and uh, pushing of the tech, you know, pushing up the beers, IPAs, you know, so right. it's good, um, man. Well, uh, I'm excited to try one yeah. of these. I may yeah. have to try to talk you into sending me a couple just so I can, uh, scratch this one off my bucket list now. Yeah. I only got one. So I'd have to go next time I'm up there. I'll have to grab some more. Um, cause it's, it's worth it. Definitely worth it. So man, yeah, I'd put it on, I'd put it on a bucket list that, you know, um, it's, it's tasty. Um, so that's the Edge of Galaxies by Braxton Labs, um, which is part of Braxton Brewing. Um, you know, something I like about the Labs beers is they've got a pretty straightforward can design. So it's just uh, wrapped in a white label with very straightforward printing. Uh, it's got a hop cone on the front. It's got the Edge, edge of Mysteries um, New England IPA printed right there on the can. Very straightforward type font, nothing crazy. Um, and, and I like that a lot. I think it's a very cool... Uh, very cool can for something like as it is you know what i mean right so but yeah i'd put it on a bucket list man uh, i'd probably get you know for a non-ipa guy i'd probably give this a nine out of ten wow yeah that's a very high rating <laughs> yeah i like i said i don't think i could drink more than one because <laughs> uh man it it likes it it's 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 crawling up in my lap and getting cozy it said hey man <laughs> let's let's just cuddle Right on. So, you know, while we're talking about Braxton, Mike, I'm going to take a big left turn here. Yeah. Uh, we've got a small giveaway from uh, Braxton. Yeah. yeah I love yeah. giveaways. I do, too. Um, so it's nothing huge, but we got a handful of stickers. Cool. Uh, I believe I've got three of them. Uh, three, um, st- you know, they're all from the from the brewery, but they're, they're, they're each one's different. And I want to do just a social media giveaway. Yeah. And uh, so this episode is going to air on Tuesday. Uh oh, I'm looking at the wrong calendar, Mike. It would help if I looked at 2020 instead of 2019. What in the world am I thinking? Oh, gosh. So this is going to air on Tuesday, February the 11th. So starting on the 11th, right? Yeah. Uh, let's, let's run this through Tuesday, February the 18th. I'm going to keep this on Facebook only. Um, if you like, our Facebook page, um, share our Facebook page and put in the comments. I like Braxton beer. So they get, so uh, they got to so so like get on our Facebook page or share our Facebook page yep. and say, I like Braxton beer. Absolutely. And that's it. And then uh, okay. I'll use a, an online randomizer, uh, to pick the winner. And then I'll reach out to you via your DM on social media and just ask for an address. I don't want to make that at all public. And uh, I'll just send it via snail mail. You get some Braxton Brewery stickers. Sounds pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so, so folks, if you're listening, get on Facebook, uh, get on our page or share a page and just say, I like Braxton beer. I love Braxton beer. Braxton beer is the best. Some of the, that sort, right? Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be super specific. I understand yeah. people are just listening to this. They're not going to have a way to just look it up. And uh, we'll put it in the description of the podcast about the giveaway. So if somebody gets a chance to pull over and uh, check that out. So I'll pretty much accept all of the above. Yeah. Um, but I, I do got to have that like in the share. That's a big deal, especially on yeah. the social medias. Cool. Yeah. And uh, for for the listeners that don't know, Braxton has some pretty cool uh, logo designs going on. So uh, I think the, the sticker addition to your collection or whatever else, uh, whatever you do with those, um, I think it would make, it's going to be a cool addition. Absolutely. Yeah. So, man, I tell you what, that's all I've got. Um, is there anything else before we close out this episode? 
No, I think this was another, you know, solid episode. You know, three beers went up um, onto the craft beer bucket list. Uh, so I encourage all of our listeners to, to try something new. Even if you don't have the ability to try the beers that we've got, go to wherever you get your craft beer and just try something you haven't had before. Um, I definitely encourage that. So since we launched this podcast back in October, I've tried so many beers that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, and uh, I enjoy that. So I'm getting a lot of flavors that I wouldn't have known I would have enjoyed otherwise. So I just want to encourage the listeners to just try something new. Cool. So we added three beers to the bucket list. The Arrowhead IPA from Marshall, the Guayberry IPA from Cigar City, um, and then uh, the Edge of Mysteries from Braxton Brewing. And I realized I just said Arrowhead IPA and it's an APA. So the Arrowhead APA from Marshall, the Guayberry from Cigar City, and the Edge of Mysteries from Braxton Brewing. Three new beers on the bucket list. Ray, I'll let you take it out to social medias and all that, and we'll see everybody later. All right. So thanks again, everybody, for listening to this episode of Craft Beer Bucket List. Uh, be sure to give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. We recently just got put up on Stitcher. Be sure to give us five stars there if you're listening to us on that platform. And of course, visit us on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll have links to all of those in the description of this podcast. And also new for us, we just launched a Patreon account. If you are just digging our content and want to support us, uh, please visit patreon.com slash craft beer bucket list and become a member of our crew. And uh, just $2 a month uh, is all we're asking for. That's not a lot and uh, no pressure at all, but it really does help us expand our ability to get more beers in. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate you. And remember to not drink and drive and always drink local. Thanks, guys. See you on the next episode. Adios. Yeah, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. We weren't recording at all. Are you serious? <laughs>